Thank you, Chairman Bacon. Chairman Bacon, Vice Chair Favor, Ranking Member Shiloni, all members of the Insurance, Commerce, and Labor Committee. My name is Jay McDonald, and I'm an active police officer with the City of Marion. And I am also the president of the Fraternal Order of Police of Ohio, representing 26,000 active and retired law enforcement officers in every corner of this great state. I'm here today to state that as Senate Bill 5 is written, Ohio law enforcement stands opposed. We are actively working with legislators to make improvements to this bill and hope that we can come to a compromise that meets your goal of reform while protecting Ohio's protectors. The FOP of Ohio is made up of thousands of members dedicated to safeguarding our communities. With that in mind, we actively seek opportunities to work with our government entities. This is never truer than during our current economic crisis. In fact, our state employees have worked with state leaders to save millions of tax dollars in the last contract. And our members who work for local governments have given millions of dollars in concessions to help balance the budget. A little off my prayer testimony, my own police department yesterday took a concession vote and voted unanimously to give concessions to the city of Marion to avoid layoffs. As Senator Shimoni pointed out earlier, my members who work for the Mahoney County Sheriff's Office have given as much as 27% of their pay back to their employer to keep the operation running. We have proven time and time again that members have been willing to give concessions in these economic times. I believe that part of this push for reform is to make the negotiation process run more smoothly. Labor negotiations can be done reasonably when management and labor sit down and work out a compromise, like in the current system, rather than having management act unilaterally, as Senate Bill 5 calls for. Senate Bill 5 will have a deep impact on public safety officers across the state. There are parts of this bill that make sense. For instance, we agree the need for, the need for transparency so that citizens can better understand what happens in the bargaining process and what's in each contract. In fact, we think transparency can be improved on the side of labor and management. The public would probably be surprised to learn that many times the cost of a management attorney is more than the cost of the wage or the benefit increase requested by the union. But here's the fundamental problem. We simply can't support a blanket elimination of collective bargaining for our members. The membership of the FOP of Ohio, who work for the state, provide an essential service and deserve to have a seat at the table when determining their wages, terms, and conditions of their employment. We have over 1,000 members of the FOP at the Department of Public Safety, at the Ohio Attorney General's Office, the Department of Taxation, the Department of Mental Health, <coughs> colleges and universities across the state and others, and other agencies for state government. Those members are just as much at risk and are just as dedicated to public safety as those members who work for sheriff's offices and local police departments, and they deserve the same rights. The elimination of binding arbitration for public safety personnel is unneeded and unwise. Consider that public safety workers are at an additional disadvantage in negotiations because we can't strike. Collective bargaining and our rights to binding arbitration are fundamental. While less than 2% of contract negotiations end, in all, end up in arbitration, it is an essential backstop for the fairness and the process. We strongly believe that the state made a covenant with police when, in 1983, the right to strike was eliminated. And in its place, we won the right to enter into binding arbitration. But today, that covenant is in danger. Not only might we lose the right to binding arbitration, but our basic right to collective bargaining a right that protects our 26,000 members and their families. One argument seems to be that public safety supervisors shouldn't have the right to collectively bargain. That is simply not accurate. As a police supervisor myself, I have never once made a decision based on the fact that my subordinate employee is also a member of a union. I have conducted a criminal investigation against the member. I have disciplined members, and I have counseled members, just as I would regardless of my union membership. As an officer of the FOP of Ohio for almost my entire career in law enforcement, I can tell you that police agencies have no problem disciplining union members. Supervisors and those in internal affairs make, make union members or not. They make decisions in the best interest of the agency and the community. Another argument we hear is that there is a need for merit pay with public employees and in law enforcement. Speaking of issues that have a potentially detrimental effect on agency operations, merit pay would essentially create a system where an officer might be paid based on the number of tickets or warrants executed. 
No one wants to pay police just to write extra tickets. We understand that enforcing the law does not make, does not always make everyone happy. On occasion, we enforce a traffic law, and some might even call a police officer an idiot. <laughs> That's a topic for another day. We believe strongly that wearing a badge, representing and protecting our communities and this state on a daily basis is merit enough to earn a fair wage. Term order of police Ohio recognizes that collective bargaining laws have remained largely, un largely unchanged since 1984. Refinements may be necessary to update the current law. We stand ready and willing to work with all of you in that process. These laws took years to write and pass, and we believe that this process over time could result in improvements to the current system. It is our recommendation to this community, committee that the interested parties sit down, work together towards a bill that protects our members and their families, while still recognizing that change may be necessary. A bill that results will likely be one that none of us will love, but that none of us hate as well. We stand ready and willing to be a part of that process and look forward to working together for a better Ohio, as we always have. I'd like to thank you for your time and consideration of my testimony here today. I will attempt to answer any questions that you might have.
actually that amount, that amount is extremely unfortunate uh, to the point of almost offensive. It costs money to provide law enforcement services in the state, whether it be in the city of Mary or for the Mahoney County Sheriff or for the State Highway Patrol. I don't believe that we need to get to a point in this state where we are contracting out law enforcement services to the lowest bidder. My whole family is involved in law enforcement. I'm a major with the Marion City Police Department. My wife's a deputy sheriff with the Marion County Sheriff's Office. And we make a reasonable and fair wage. And it's because we earn it. When we go to work, and when my members go to work, we earn every dollar, not only for the work that we do, but for what we might encounter and what we might have to face. And I don't know how you base merit pay in law enforcement. You pay me not only for the call that I investigate, but you pay me for my willingness to run towards gunfire. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Questions from the committee? Senator Schaefer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. McDonald, uh, I just want to echo the Vice Chairman's comments uh, and questions. Uh, and to thank you so much for you and all your members and what you do for us. And I would be very interested in also seeing, um, which I'll continue as well, uh, any proposed changes, amendments, you might have ideas, uh, assuming uh, that the bill goes through and is uh, enacted, uh, be very interested in participating in that process as well. But thank you. Thank you, Senator Schaefer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, having negotiated with law enforcement, uh, one of the things is, is, a, is a conflicting value in my opinion to me is uh, from time to time the temptation to, be, as we would say, negotiate with others. to move toward exaggeration sometimes is not constructive in the process. Both sides engage in that sort of thing from time to time. So the change in what we would do would be to reach a point where we would break the silence and come forward with an agreed upon state of play, say, and then return to the table uh, in the hopes of having a shared public understanding. My question, Mr. Chairman, is this. Would that meet your test of transparency as, as you suggested? Absolutely. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. It's, uh, Chairman Bacon, Senator Sorry, I believe that would. Uh, I, I believe in, in some of the points that were made um, in earlier testimony that um, opening up the, uh, the process to the light of day could be good in, in, in process and in, in parts. I don't believe that we should exchange pieces of negotiation through the newspaper that would be not only counterproductive, but it would impede the process to the point of uh, unworthiness. 